this video, we're going to talk about placing images, placing text, and manipulating images and what that entails. So we're going to start with talking about placing things exactly on the page where you want them. I have an eight and a half by 11 document. Uh, I've got margin, as you can see. I've got an eighth of an inch bleed. So let's start by clicking a box. And I'm just going to click out here. When you click, this dialog box pops up. So my width, since it's eight and a half by 11, I know I've got bleed out there, so I need to add a quarter inch because there's an eighth of an inch on each side. So I'm going to put 8.75. I'm going to hit tab. And then for the height, let's just do three inches. I'm going to click OK. Now this box is not where I want it. So to move it, I could grab it, move it, and try and position it where I want it. However, if we look up here in the ribbon, we see these exact stats. Now I know that from the edge of the page here, and if we look, that's where this Rubik's Cube is set. I'm going to go point, I'm sorry, minus 0.125, and I'm going to do the same for Y, minus 0.125, and it moves our box into the area that we have specified. Very fine control. Now, if I wanted the measurements to come from the center, I would do this, or if I wanted them from the bottom right, I would do this. So this is your reference point. And again, we've got width and height. If I wanted the height to be three and a quarter, select that 3.25 tab, and it automatically sets my container for that size. So now that we've got the box the way we want it, I'm going to look at my swatches panel, or I can look at color, either one. I'm going to set the tech or the stroke to none, so it doesn't have a stroke. I'm going to set the fill to blue. So whichever one is on top, this is the stroke, this is the fill. So now we have a box that's filled with blue, placed exactly where we want it. So let's delete that for now. <clears throat> now we're going to place an image. Um, I'm going to grab this board game image and I'm just going to click to place it. Now let's talk about what an image is. So what you actually did was place the image inside a container. The container is represented here with blue outline. Now if I'm on a different layer it'd be a different color but for right now it's blue outline. This is how you crop an image. You just drag the blue outline if you want it to fit the image exactly, we can double click on the outline and it will go to the image. Well, that's great, but I'm trying to scale the image. It doesn't work. That's because you're trying to scale the container. In InDesign, to scale an image, when you hold the shift key down to get your proportions, you also have to hold the command key down in order to scale. Now, it helps if you grab the handle. There you go. So now it scales the image. Well, let's say that you wanted to focus more on the dice and you want to make that area big. See this area here with the bullseye. If you're going to move it, don't click in the center. Click off center. Because as soon as you click on the center, notice your outline changes to a different color. Now, to see this more clearly, let's blow this image up a lot bigger. If I hold the Option key down along with Command and Shift, it'll scale from the center. All right, so let's look at it closely now. When I click this, notice the color of the outline changes. We get this tan color. This means that you're actually affecting the image itself. So if I hold the shift key down, I can resize the image, or I can blow it up inside its container. If I want to manipulate that image inside the container, I just grab and drag, put it where I want. Then I can click on the container, Again, don't click on the center because if you do, you're going to get the image. I click on the container and I can crop it down and focus on any area that I want. So that is a difference between all the other programs that you use for Adobe and InDesign. InDesign, when you place it, you place it in a container. And there's lots of options for messing with containers. But for now, just to understand, this is a container. If you go to scale it and hold the shift key down, you're just going to crop it. If you want to scale a whole image, you have to hold shift and command and scale the whole image that way. Okay, so that is the difference between the container and the image. 
So we're going to start and we're going to place some um, text. So I've got some text here called Cactus Info. And I can go up here and I can click. Now let's say I didn't click. Let's say that I put it here. And let's say that it was right here. Well, we can do the same thing up here. I know that my margin starts at 0.375. And I can do the same thing to here. 0.375. And I hit tab to go between them. Now I know that my width is 8 inches. Or approximately 8 inches. Probably 8 or 7.75 7 or so. There we go. And then I know my height here should be around 9.75. There we go. That's fairly close. Maybe 10.75. Eh. We'll just drag it. That's another way to do it. And that works just well. If it was a quarter inch, I could do the math in my head. I'm not a mathematician. So with this set, now we're going to place tech or place an image. Make sure that you have clicked off of your text document because if you place the image, it's going to place it inside your text document. That's fine if you want it there, but if you don't, you want to click off and place the image. We're going to place cactus now. We're just going to place it, drop it and drag it. And then we're going to drag it into position. Again, I could use my X and Y. Notice that I was able to place it perfectly. It's four inches wide, six inches tall, and that's fine. Problem is the text is now behind it. What do we do? Well, we have the text wrap panel. So the text wrap panel can be found under window. And you go down to text wrap. It's right here. Okay. <clears throat> so we've clicked on our image and now we're going to click this second button here, which wrap around bounding box. Now it's wrapping. Looks fine here, but here it's so close. Our cactus needs to breathe a little. So we come up here. Typically, the first thing I do, I don't want text wrap over here, and it looks fine here. So I'm just going to undo this link so that I look at the box. This is the right offset. That's the one I'm going to do. That way I can do it manually for each one. Notice now that the text is now moved over. So using text wrap is a nice way to wrap your text. So if we click again on the image and we look here, this no text wrap, this wraps around bounding box. This will wrap around an object shape if you have a circle. This will actually put the object in between it and this will say jump to the next column. So if you have an image in one column and you don't want text below it, you can make the text jump to the other. You can invert it so that the text is inside your image and not. And then here, this controls the top, bottom, uh, left, and right. And again, if you want it the same on all sides, you click this. And then it says wrap to both, and you can just do this depending on what you want. So that's text wrap, essentially. So let's get rid of this. <clears throat> and let's say we're working with this cactus. Um, Make sure, again, you don't click in the middle because what happens? You're selecting that. Um, and you've got your text wrap. Well, I'm going to turn text wrap off now. Okay. So I want to align this. Maybe I've got two images. Let's place another image just for fun. Uh, let's, do, let's do the word print. There we go. It's nice and pretty. So I want print top center and the cactus bottom center. Well, how do I do that? We've got the align panel. Now the align panel is really nice. You can do all kinds of stuff with it and align things. Now here's the key, align to selection. That will align multiple objects together. So if I was to select both of these and align them to center, see they both align to themselves in the center. And then if I do it vertical center, print is now in the middle. But notice that it's basically over off to the side. If I change a line to margins, what's going to happen? Well, we center it. It centers between the margins. Vertical center between the margins. So if we want something that's 
equal space from margins, we can do that. We also have align to page, align to spread. If you have two pages side by side, align to key object is really interesting. We'll talk about that in a second. So let's go back to um, align to page this time. So anytime we're doing this, we can actually distribute objects and things like that. So let's take a look at how that works. I'm going to make a couple of boxes and a lovely box. Let's go ahead and make it a black box. And I'm going to do that just by telling it swap, fill, and stroke, or shift X. I click it. It now is a box. Option key, shift. I can drag multiple boxes out. So if you ever want to copy something in InDesign, hold the option key. If you want it to um, be proportional or be on the same size, you know, things like that, hold the shift key too. But I can just hold the option key and drag. That's fine. Let's take a look at what this does. So let's select all of our boxes. We're going to first align to selection. If we hit center, that's what happens. They all go to the center of all the selections. Okay, and if we do it that way, it's going to align the left edges, do it that way, align the right. We got a bunch of them, align the top. Nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened. Why did nothing happen? Because they're already aligned that way because I held the shift key. But let's do this. Let's move them around a little bit. Now let's select align at the top. They'll always align at the top, align at the center, and align at the bottom. Okay? <clears throat> so let's align them in the center, and then let's distribute the ob objects. So distribute horizontal centers. It will put an equal amount of space between them. The problem is, what if you have different size images? And you do this. Well, let's see. Notice that there's less space here and more space here, and it's not even. So when you get something like that, you click Use Spacing, and you put in, I want... 0.125. Let's do an eighth of an inch between each one. And then I'm going to go down here and click the spacing. Now there's an eighth of an inch space in between each one. If they were vertical and I wanted to align them vertical, I would just use the vertical. So it allows me to use spacing. I can align it to selection. A key object, if I need to, when they're all selected, I can assign a key object, which is usually the first one you select. Margins, page, and spread. So that is how the Align Panel works. Thank you for watching the video.